Hey guys, I'm here setting up my next project. I'm actually just finishing it up. It's actually a home theater piece. See that computer right there in the top right hand corner that uh, is actually going to be the home theater PC itself. And uh, I was given to it from a uh, tech job I'm doing. It was perfect for what I needed. It's got uh, all the inputs you need for your flash cards, everything, even a firewire port in the front for that. It's even got a DVD burner built in. But it needs a little bit of a firm press to eject. There we go. I just put in a DVD that was lying around to test it out. I had to throw in a wireless card. Um, it's very finicky on Linux, which ones work, which ones don't. So I got a Rose Wheel wireless end card with uh, dual, spe uh, dual band spectrum capability. And we have a wireless keyboard and mouse plugged in, and it's all projected over HDMI. I didn't have to do anything special, no driver installations or anything to get it set up. Webcam um, getting set up right now for Skype, as well as the TV. Right now I've already got the, uh, as you can see, on the side, that Firefox which came pre-installed. I installed Netflix, Hulu, a little YouTube extension as well. Got VLC set up. Pythos for Pandora, Rhythmbox is our media player, and Qubit Torrent for uh, downloading our movies. And of course it comes with the LibreOffice Suite pre-installed so we can do Word docs and everything. It is a full-fledged computer that has just been I'm tailoring for uh, media theater use. Uh, this one I'm actually building for my mother uh, as a little Mother's Day gift. Um, right now I'm actually in the middle of uh, installing Skype. There we go. Put in my password. It's just getting Skype set up for me. Yep, there we go. Skype installed. So now we will see if it works. Uh, right now we have the Ubuntu Unity interface in there. I didn't. Re I think it actually works quite nicely as a home theater system. Uh, so let's go to Skype. We'll open that up. Skype needs a little bit of troubleshooting, I think. Oh, there we go. It just needed a relaunch. Yes, I agree. Okay, we got Skype for Linux set up there. I will test that out a little bit further. Um, right now, actually, we have our music playing through uh, my speakers. I have it set up because I had to do a little bit of a uh, retrofit to get it work. Uh, we got the USB camera, of course, run through the back here, and we got our, um, I, uh, kind of did a redneck rig, I guess you could say. Um, we have our HDMI's coming in, of course, for our audio and video, and then on the back I have a, it comes out through a headphone, because it's a little cheaper LCD TV, so I have a headphone splitter I got from Radio Shack for about Headphone jack sometimes gets a little loose because it is a cheaper TV. Um, got our red and white. Just gets loose. I have to get a better splitter. But that will do for now. And it goes over to our sound system over here. This way I have it set up that uh, whenever we switch between the cable and the TV, we don't have to actually switch between uh, cables or do anything fancy. And... The addition of this is that my TV remote, which I gotta get a new one, universal one, I'm gonna get a Logitech one so that I can actually control the TV with the remote, through, I mean the computer through the remote, we can actually control the sound of the speakers. I have the speakers set at max at all time and uh, it has a line noise filter on there to keep out the, ground, uh, the buzzing and things. Except for when it's not plugged in all the way. So, I will show you. Uh, it also is replacing a dead DVD player we had. 
some cheap $15 one and it finally died after two years and I was just handed this computer. The client just asked me before I use it myself, of course, to wipe off the data in front of them. So, remove it. so I removed it, windows and everything in one fell swoop. And now we are going to open a disk. Now, of course, it requires a little bit extra. Um, close. So I actually have to navigate to where the DVD is located. Open that up. And then we hit play, give it a few seconds, and boom. This was just the first DVD that was uh, out there on, as I said, I'm setting this up at my mom's house. And we see that we can play our movie. Now, Pythos is running in the background, so I have to stop that. Uh, another nice thing, uh, I like VLC personally for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, well, though for Windows, I prefer M Player, um, uh, Media Player Classic is what it's called. Uh, great program. So now we have our uh, DVD running. Just want to make sure I'm getting sound. We are getting sound. It's a little muffled because uh, different programs, of course, pump out volume. Not exactly different volumes. VLC also has the capability that even if your max volume is not loud enough, that you can actually use the scroll wheel or right here in the corner. I doubt you can see it. Let me move up closer. I got a wireless mouse for a reason. You can see right here in the corner we have that and I can roll, scroll it up and we can boost the uh, volume up to twice the output software volume. I think you read something somebody just did. All right, so let's close that out. That's fully tested. Uh, I'm going to test out Skype in a little bit, but we know Pythos is working, which means Rhythmbox will work for sure. I open that up. Uh, I'm downloading a couple of movies right now. Uh, so let's get Netflix opened up for us. Okay. So I, what it is is an application that... Uh, it's an application that actually allows me to um, uh, uh, basically emulate uh, Netflix because Netflix is only native right now for Windows and Mac. And, of course, we are using Linux. But it works fairly well and it actually is a little smoother to use and it's better made for TV uh, because it will blow up the whole thing to a full screen. So let me log in. Okay, so we have that there, and then I'm just going to put on whatever I was last watching. I was putting on that 70 Show as a test, also one of my favorites. So as we see, Netflix is loading up. Yeah, Mr. Broken Picture Heart. starts at grainy well, usually with Netflix back. as the HD is buffering, okay. but we can see it works perfectly. I'm so glad Donna's not and uh, nice thing is, it's it's I'm better. It's glad. just I'm similar to the uh, better suited for if you're using it on a TV because it gives you these little options here. So we're gonna escape out of that. Uh, we've got VLC, as I said, so I can play movies built onto the computer as well as um, uh, uh, DVDs, CDs, all those. Uh, that are put in so we're great there we've got our office and everything we've got firefox as our browser and uh we can go to youtube of course i just gotta optimize the web browser because uh it's just uh it's loading a little slow not as fast as i'd like but uh I, i'll tweak that later it's not that important at the moment so let's see what we want to do. Okay. All right. So we got YouTube going, just like any Firefox browser. Anytime you load a browser, then we can bump it up to the HD quality because I got a good internet for that. go it's loading
Here we go. Now, let's try to get something with some actual video, not a still image. So we got YouTube going. And we see that works. I got a few other things I'm going to be working on this in a little bit. I'm going to be adding a video card uh, in NVIDIA One because they work better with Linux. Um, uh, overall, because I can enable what's called VDPAL, and I can get some uh, video optimizations and encode a little bit faster and decode is a little bit faster as well as I'll uh, get this set up eventually that I'm going to actually plug in a couple of uh, um, uh, controllers for gaming, and I'll be able to do Nintendo 64 and old console games on there. So, uh, yep, that's my little uh, project I'm doing right now, and it's just about to be finished. Hope you enjoyed it.